Here in Cape Walk by Band Lab, I have a guitar track in blue and a vocal track in green. Now, unfortunately, during the second phrase of this vocal track, I sung a wrong lyric. Let's just have a quick listen. Was it the way that you stand? It should be, was it the way that I stand? Obviously, I want to correct that. Now, one thing I could do is just record on a second audio track and edit it in. So, for example, if I show you one I made earlier, I've got this second recording here uh, with the correct lyric. I could go in, probably select the one that I want to get rid of, like so, press delete on my keyboard, drag the new one in there, and it's all fixed very nicely. Now that's one way you could do it. It's not the most elegant way. And particularly if you wanna do multiple takes and then select later which one you want best, I probably wouldn't think this is the best way to do it. Another downside to this methodology is if we go back a couple of steps to where I recorded this new vocal, I'll still be able to hear the original vocal as I'm singing. That would be quite off-putting, okay? So I'd probably need to go in beforehand and delete it anyway, like so, okay? So as I say, if you want to use this, this method, I think it's okay, but it's probably not the most elegant method. So let's just hide that track like so and look at another method. Now, the other method you could use is comping. I've discussed this in other videos and I'll put a link at the top right if you don't know how to do comping. But as a quick overview, what we do with comping is we record several takes and then select which take which takes we want later. It does require sort of prior preparation and knowing that you want to do it this way. You'd have to go up to the record button, long press on it and make sure you have comping selected as your recording method. And as long as you've done that and you've recorded it to new lanes, which we'll look at now by clicking on this little icon, then you will have a number of different takes to choose from. Now, assuming that one of those takes has the correct lyric, I could just select that area like so down here in the lanes and hey presto, it's fixed. And I now have my corrected lyric in there, okay? Comping is one method, as I say, as long as you have recorded the correct lyric in this case at some stage. One of the downsides to comping, and it may be off-putting for you, is the fact that you can't hear the previous takes as you're recording your new take, okay? So this means that you have to just record this lyric in isolation. Now, we're not always recording vocals, of course, and wanting to correct um, just vocals. Sometimes the context is really, really important when you just want to insert a new recording, okay? So another method that you may want to look at is punching in and out. Hi folks, I'm Mike, and I hope you're well. Someone somewhere not only once skinned a cat, but they found multiple ways of doing it. Anyway, here in Cakewalk by Band Lab, there's also multiple ways to solve problems often. Now we're going to solve that problem that we had there in the intro using the punching method in just a moment. However, before we get into that, I just want to remind you that if you're new to Cakewalk by Band Lab and you haven't even recorded your first song yet, you should follow the link in the description down below to my absolute beginner's guide to Cakewalk, where I guide you through that process with no fluff in a simplified manner and all in one place. Now there's a coupon code on the screen at the moment, which is gonna be valid for the next couple of days, so you can get a handy discount for that. Now, let's get punching. So before we go ahead and record using punching in and out, we need to make sure that we can see the module for punching in and out. You may or may not be able to see it at the moment at the top row up here in Cakewalk. So if you can't, just right click on a blank area where all the modules are, go to where it says modules, and then go down and select punch. And then you'll be able to see this little module here. These are our punch in and out options. The other thing that I like to do is select the correct recording method, okay? So I'm gonna to go to the record button over here, long left press on there, and that brings up these options. It's on comping at the moment, which we'll come back to later. But I'm gonna suggest one of the most sort of straightforward ways of doing punching in and out is to use the overwrite method. This is like the traditional method you would have with tape, okay? Where the old recording is you know, gone, it's deleted, and then the new recording is inserted in its place. So it's the most sort of basic method. Now, the next thing I like to do is select the area 
that I, I want to uh, use my punch in and out method with. Okay, you don't have to do it like this, but I think it makes it easier. So I'm going to go down to my vocal and I'm going to just wait till my mouse cursor changes to this eye beam. And then I'm going to select an area, giving myself a little space, a little bit of space either side of where I want to do the take here and then release. Now that has made a selection in Cakewalk, okay? And you can see that selection reflected in the ruler at the top there, okay? That just makes it easier for the next step. If we go to the record punch in out module, I'm gonna click this icon here, okay? That's gonna set the in and out points of our punch in and out according to the current selection. Not to be confused, by the way, with an icon which is right next to it here, which is exactly the same, which is in our sort of loop module here, okay? Just be careful you don't click on the wrong one. This is in our punch module. I'm going to click on that. A few things are gonna happen and I'll explain them all. So I click on it now. Okay, so the first thing that's happened is it's set the in and out points for punching according to that selection. You can see the numbers reflect that here. And indeed, if you want to manually change that, you can go in and change those numbers there if you want to use that methodology. Now, the other way that you can change this selection is on the ruler. We can see now this red, these red sort of markers have appeared, okay? They are now showing the in and out points for our punch. We could grab one of them and just sort of drag it around like so. Or we could just grab the bottom line here, wait till our, our cursor changes to this sort of weird left and right icon with a P, and then we can drag the whole punch in and out sort of selection there if we want to, okay? Now, another thing that happened when I pressed that icon was we automatically went into the punch mode and this button was switched on. So it's going to uh, punch in the next time we record. We could switch that off, of course, if we don't decide to go ahead. But of course, we're going to punch in and out. So I'm going to turn that on. OK, so because, as I say, we had overwrite selected here in the recording method, What's going to happen as soon as I press record now to record this track, you're going to see this disappear. It's going to start off by deleting what was originally there. And that's handy because it means we're not going to hear that original recording. OK, I'm going to arm my track for recording over here on the left. Go to and uh, sort of a, a few bars before I need to record and I'm going to hit record and re-record that vocal. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand too close? And you can see that it's just got rid of that old recording and put in my slightly dodgy new recording. <laughs> it wasn't that great a performance, but I did get the lyric correct. Okay, so that's one thing you may want to do. Now, another thing you may want to do is actually set up a loop so you can do several takes. And I probably would want to retake that again. OK, so what I'm going to do is make a selection again, like so, just to leave myself a little bit of leeway. OK, and I'm going to go up here um, to I'm going to set my loop selection up here by clicking on this icon, as I just did there, similar to the way we did it in the punch in and out. OK, now it's set up a loop. And it's going to go around and around there and it's going to re-record that okay so that's one method i could do until i've got a take that i'm happy with okay now this leads me into my sort of next topic because you can combine this with uh comping okay so if we go up to our record method like so and click on comping what's going to happen now is we've got that loop set up we can, you know, re-record this as many times as we want, but we can keep each take, okay? It's not just going to simply overwrite each take. But if we do make sure that we delete the section, yeah, that we're going to be re-recording before we start comping, that will ensure that we can't hear it each time. So I'm just going to select this clip here and press on my delete key on the keyboard. I could have selected a range and done the same thing. So what's going to happen now, and I'm going to demonstrate this to you by recording three different takes, is we can record those three takes and get the best of them later. So bear with me. <laughs> my voice is a bit croaky today. These might not sound all that great, but I'll try my best. Let's hang in there and do three takes. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand too close? Was it that really was the bad, touch huh? of my <laughs> hand? Was it the way that I stand too close? 
Was Getting better. The touch of my Last one. Hand? Was it the way that I stand too close? Okay, let's stop there. We could do as many takes as we want. Now, the last take that I did there is the one which is showing. Okay, that's the, the, the last take. But I don't have to stick with that one. Because I set this to comp mode up here, yeah, with that record button. Now, when I click on the lanes track down, on the lanes icon down here to show the lanes, yeah, then I can see those other three takes which I just recorded there. Okay, so I can now go ahead and do as I demonstrated earlier and just select one of those and that will be the take which is actually played in the comp. Now, apart from being able to punch in and out when you're recording, I really do think it's useful for you to fully understand comping in Cakewalk by BandLab. I didn't go into too much detail about it here, so if you want to know all about it, just click on this thumbnail right here.